Hey everyone, welcome back to Ancestral Healing. In today's video, we are going to be discussing whether or not vegetables are necessary for human health. We've been told our whole lives that they are, and nutritional guidelines in mainstream media have gone so far to push vegetables on us that they've made us believe that we should only eat vegetables. They've even demonized meat. This is what I call the plant-based agenda. I don't make these videos to instill fear. I only make these videos to try to kind of offer an alternative perspective and open your mind to understand that things are not always as they seem or things are not always as we are told they are. Thinking critically is crucial. If you want to learn more about an animal-based lifestyle and are ready to start your journey, check out our ebook, A Guide to Ancestral Healing. I will post it in the description below. Okay, so let's dive right in. The research on this topic is quite limited, but it is quite possible that not consuming vegetables is okay for your health. It's beneficial. I learned this from my own personal experience because I have eliminated vegetables for the first two years when I went carnivore and I had never felt better. While some experts believe that carbohydrates are not necessary, there's not a lot of people that believe animal fats and protein are not necessary. Vitamins and minerals can be obtained from animal sources. Leaving the question of whether or not specific plant compounds, known as phytonutrients, are necessary in a diet with no plants. Can we just eat animal-based foods? For sure we can. Just look at the research that Weston A. Price did when he visited different tribes across the world. In certain parts of the world, there are times during the year where there are no carbohydrates available. Think of cold places like Alaska, where vegetables can't grow easily. What do people there eat? Marine products, meat and fat of marine mammals. To date, those foods are thought to be true health foods. These people eat a lot of seafood, a lot of moose, shellfish, some seasonal gathered berries, and caribou. So it seems that there were people who survived and thrived for generations without eating carbohydrates every single day and going for long periods of time without any carbohydrates. So the question is, are vegetables always beneficial? Are they really the super health food for humanity? I love and I'm fascinated by some of the research conducted by Georgia Eid, and I highly encourage you to look into her work. I will post some of her videos in the description below, some of my favorite videos, you guys have to check them out. Dr. Georgia Eid is a psychiatrist with a specific interest in nutrition, and she has expressed some controversial views about the health benefits of cruciferous vegetables. According to her, there is a tendency among public health officials and nutrition experts to overstate the benefits of vegetables without fully considering or mentioning the potential drawbacks. In particular, Dr. Georgia Eid has expressed concerns about a specific compound, sulforaphane, which is found in vegetables such as broccoli. She argues that this compound is not the panacea that some experts claim it to be, and that it actually may have some harmful effects on human health. You may have heard me talk about this before in my other videos, this notion that plants contain anti-nutrients. Plant anti-nutrients are compounds found naturally in plants that can interfere with the absorption of minerals and nutrients in the body. And potentially it could lead to nutrient deficiencies. These compounds are generally produced as a plant's defense mechanism against predators, such as insects and animals. Some common types of anti-nutrients include phytates found in grains, legumes, and nuts. Phytates can bind to minerals like iron, calcium, and zinc, preventing their absorption in the gut. Another anti-nutrient is lectins found in legumes, grains, and some vegetables. Lectins can also interfere with the absorption of nutrients and disrupt the gut. There's also oxalates, which can be found in spinach, can bind to calcium, preventing absorption, could also lead to kidney stones. And the last one that I will mention, but there are a lot more, is tannins, 
found in tea, coffee, and some fruits. Also, they do the same thing. It binds to minerals. It prevents absorption. So I want to read you a little excerpt from Dr. Georgia E. I'm going to grab my laptop. She says, Public health officials and nutrition experts love to sing the praises of the virtuous cruciferous vegetable family. How does sulforaphane kill tiny living creatures and why should you care? In research studies, it has also been demonstrated that sulforaphane can kill healthy human cells and can cause cancerous changes in human cells. It may, be, it may come as a surprise to you to learn that the sulforaphane is the very same broccoli ingredient that we are told is responsible for the health benefits of broccoli. Why do we only hear about the broccoli's superhero side and not its villainous dark side? The belief that vegetables are good for us comes entirely from epidemiological studies, which are only capable of generating untested theories about food and health. Scientific experiments are then conducted to try to support those beliefs, and the truth is that these experiments yield very mixed results about how broccoli affects us. While vegetables can provide some nutrition, some people may be more sensitive than others to the compounds, to the chemicals found in the plants. While some people find that consuming plants once in a while has little negative effect on their health, others may find that avoiding them altogether is more beneficial. Plants also have less bioavailability than animal-based foods, which means that we do not absorb all of the nutrients that we think we're absorbing from a plant because of the anti-nutrients that block the absorption. This is all very dependent on each individual. And the only way to truly find out if vegetables are harming you, if you'd feel better without vegetables, is to try it out and cut them out. According to Georgia Eid, and this is fascinating, there are no known civilizations that have consumed a vegan diet throughout their entire lives. While there are many examples of cultures across different backgrounds and locations who have sustained a life on a diet consisting mostly of meat for prolonged periods of time, even for generations. In her opinion, the latter provides more meaningful insight about the relationship between meat and health than short-term scientific studies comparing the effects of consuming more meat and vegetables. Some of the notable meat-heavy societies include the Inuit, Mongolians, the Maasai, among others. There are many. Most of these tribes relied heavily on game meat and on uh, marine life. They were known to have good health throughout their lives. They were thriving. They were strong. They had wide jaws, wide dental arches, perfectly defined face structures, free of disease. They did not have the diseases that are prevalent in today's society, a society that prioritizes plant-based foods and makes meat the bad guy. So as a result of all of this, Georgia Eid questions whether or not vegetables are really necessary for human health. Over the last four years, I have been strict carnivore. Then I tried to reintroduce some vegetables. And frankly, I can handle a few here and there if, you know, prepared properly. Like if I have a cucumber, I'll peel the skin, I'll take out the seeds. But what I have noticed is that most plants cause me digestive issues or they make my wrists hurt or my lower back. I was able to become so in tune with my body by eliminating all plant foods for two whole years. Now, when I reintroduce them, my body will tell me immediately if it likes it or not. I know this can sound crazy, especially if you're kind of new in this space. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm not here to convince you. I just share tidbits of information from my own personal journey, from the information that I read, from the stories of others, in hopes that I can plant the seed to show you that there is so much more to this than what meets the eye. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today, wishing you a beautiful day ahead, and I'll catch you on our next video.